We're lucky we left our Southwest Turkey road trip open-ended. Kosh was originally supposed to be just three days, but quickly turned into a whole week. And there were five reasons we almost didn't want to leave Kosh at all. First up are the ancient cities of Kakova and Kalekoi, and the best way to get there is by boat. There are plenty of options at Akash, but we're glad we picked Bermuda Boat. There are many beautiful islands along the coast here in this part of the Antalya region that are only accessible by doing a boat tour just like this one. And there's going to be about seven or eight stops, but this boat tour is about eight hours for 150 lira. And that includes lunch and even snacks later on. So as part of our boat tour, there is Kakova Island, which we just visited, and now Kalikoi, which we're currently on. We have about an hour to explore, and it's called Kalikoi because Kali is castle, Koi village, and there's a castle right at the top of this village. So normally it's 14 Turkish years, but thanks to the museum pass that Gokche got us, free entrance. Said the whole village is actually family together. They make money during the summer and spend it in the winter because nobody comes here during the winter or not as many people come here. So we made it up here on the top of the castle. The scenery is so worth it. It's so beautiful here. So there's actually a few spots in Kalikoi that you could actually stay over. The cool thing about staying over here though is you could actually access the kayaks and kayak over the sunken city as opposed to passing by it in a boat. The boats that this size can't go over it. We stopped by at Aquarium Bay and then Chamluk Bay. They actually served us tea and some cookies, which was very nice. So far, this was one of the best tours that I've ever been to. If you want to spend more than an hour at Kalekoi and have a car, you can drive out to nearby Uja's and rent a private boat for a few hours or even a whole day. We just stopped by the castle village and this is our second time here this week. We beat the crowds this time from the boats from Kosh. On the private boat tour, we we're of course given a little bit more free range as to how much time we could spend here. We made it up to the top of the castle. The scenery up there is amazing. You can see kind of where the sunken city starts and the bay begins. So we had a quick bite at the I Am Here Cafe. It has an amazing scenic lookout, some really unique seating, and the ice cream is actually about seven lira per scoop. So, you know, not terrible for the area. And this time we managed to come to the other side of the island and we had one of the king's gums here as well. And this time it's right in water, which is so cool because we've never seen one in the water before. We are actually very close to the sunken the actual like sunken part that you can see from here. I don't know if the camera is doing the justice. Color changes and we can still see the stones here, right under the water. And the earthquakes actually... The earthquakes sunk into the water. We came to this bay area and even though you can't dive in at where the whole sunken city area is, you can actually see some parts of the city here. So now we're gonna just enjoy the water. Kosh also has some of the best diving spots in all of Turkey. We wound up sticking around a whole extra day for my first ever scuba diving experience. Well, we are only two students. It's so cool and we get like a VIP service, but everyone is assigned to one instructor. This is going to be Steve's first experience. I'm very excited for him, but I'm also very excited for myself because it's been over 10 years since last time I did it. I actually have two stars. My name is Umut. Uh, I'm dying in the last 21 years and last six years I'm the professional. I will explain the, just the base of the scuba diving. Inside the tanks there is a air, not oxygen. And this is the most quality air you have ever breathed before, okay? <laughs> we are using the signing under the water with our hands. This is the global one. Okay. You look very nice. <laughs> halfway decent for my first time diving. It was a little bit hard to remember to like breathe at the same time as they're sitting you down on a rock or looking at fish. You could actually swim while waiting to dive again if you want to dive again. And I'm gonna go jogging and go in the water now because you know, she's a little fish. 
We got our certifications here. They are not legal documents. We actually have to come back for three days in a row to get actual training and actual certifications here. If relaxing on a beach is more your style, Kash has two famous spots nearby. One of them even actually has sand dunes, looking like it's straight out of a desert. So Kapitash Beach is a public beach here about 25 minutes outside of Kash. There's free entrance. It opens, I think, at 8. There are 186 steps to go all the way down to the beach and of course all the way up. The water is though so worth it to come here. So what makes Kapitash Beach kind of so famous is it's at the foot of a canyon along with its beautiful turquoise waters. There is a cold water running under the ground. The water is actually colder compared to the other beach parts of Turkey. It's super wavy, but because of the location of this beach right by the canyon, it's always wavy here. The sand is so soft and so white. It's so beautiful here. Now, a lot more people are coming and it's already 9.30, so it pays to be the early bird and it's a beautiful beach. I mean, it really even more than Chinakale region seems like a great ocean road. Uh, it's so beautiful here. It was actually 40 liras for two people to get into Patara because the beach is actually within an ancient city, but we got in for free because we have museum cards. It took us for about an hour to drive here from Kash. We highly suggest you to come here in the early morning if you want to have some calm and nice water. In the afternoon, the wind gets crazy. Who needs to go to Dubai when you could just come right here to Turkey on the southwest coast at Patara Beach and see sand dunes yourself? Well, my mask is here and Steve didn't fly away. So we're in a good place, but it's so crowded here. The sunset is absolutely gorgeous. Sun successfully set on another day here in Kosh, Turkey. We have a lot more fun in store for tomorrow. After spending a whole day at a beach or on a boat, it was nice to be able to lazily walk around Kasha's marina area. Aside from the marina and the beautiful restaurants right on the water, there are also side streets in Kash and they have so many beautiful little boutique shops and restaurants, cafes, you can name it. We came to Smiley's tonight and as we were kind of looking at the menu, the boat captain came up to us and pointed out that this was the best fish restaurant that you could come to when you're here in Kosh. It's right on the marina. So we got Lagos, which is the special fish here in Kosh. I'm really excited to see how good this fish is going to taste. So they decided to serve us some extra meze and we have atom and some eggplant paste, I guess, here. The atom is very dangerous because of the high level of red pepper it has, but Steve is used to it by now. Oh my god, it's so good. I grew up not liking fish at all, but now I'm obsessed and now I understand good fish and this is good fish. What do you want? <laughs> Kosh has a bunch of hotel options near the marina, but just outside the city center, we wanted to try out something a little different. A first for either of us. Okay, we have an uninvited friend on our tent. She's gonna hang out with us for the night, I think. <laughs> All right, dust him. See you in a little bit. Such an amazing experience we're gonna get. I know. I feel like we're gonna love it so much. Gokche saved the day. I got the shampoo, I got the towels, now it's the shower time. And where are the showers, Gok? Right over there at the corner. So this is my first ever glamping experience and I won't lie, I was a little bit nervous when we booked this <laughs> because I'm from New York City, I've really never done camping before. I mean, I've never done camping before either, so this was my first experience as well, even though I didn't grow up in a big city. <laughs> But we really want to try this because when you're coming to Kosh, you have to look for all the activities. There's so much to do. We actually 
were worried a little bit because especially Steve <laughs> has sleep in trouble without an air conditioner, but you were fine. And Very relaxed, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want to do glamping, there are also other options here. There are stone houses, there are bungalow houses, and there's a really cute house right behind it. It's like a Habitan house. <laughs> I really liked it a lot. The bungalow and the stone houses have their own bathroom facilities though, so if you want to spend a little bit more, you get your own private bathroom. It's about uh, seven or eight minutes outside of the Kosh City Center, so you're probably gonna have to drive back in if you have a car or find another way of transportation. I'm sure the owners could help you out. We had an amazing time glamping and in Kosh overall. A week barely felt like enough time, and we cannot wait to return again someday. Finally, Steve and I are riding a bicycle. I've been begging for this for years. Ugh! <gasps>